um, now that we appear to be at the end of Trump and uh, hopefully and uh, all things Trump whether it be silly TV shows and what have you um, um, <clears throat> I didn't think it would be necessary to say this but uh, I guess in the world we live in now you can't rule out anything in terms of the, um, the nature of people online with that wall of anonymity you have. Um, uh, when I held up the sign that said, you're welcome on SNL, that was a joke. I mean, I, I thought anybody <clears throat> um, would understand that. But I see this interesting number of people, these writers, uh, and I use that word, um, uh, generously, these writers online who say, you know, oh God, you know, Alec Baldwin is as unhinged as Trump himself. I mean, that tired thing about, oh, he's been playing Trump so long that maybe he is, maybe he's been like Trump all along and we never noticed that. When I said you're welcome on the show, that was a joke. I mean, the, the notion that I would assume that uh, anything I did had anything to do with the result of the election is ridiculous um, and, and I thought people knew that but apparently some people know it and ignore it which is kind of malicious when you think about it or they just don't know it because they don't really have any experience like a lot of these people who are writing now are very young and all they have is their youth you know they don't have any uh, uh, resume or they don't have any experience and they and everything is about um, it's so much easier to dislike things. It's so much easier to cr criticize things. Because if you say you like something, you open yourself up for the same criticism. We've heard that before. But uh, um, I do believe that with the numbers the show had, nothing to do with me, but the show itself, Update, you know, Colin and Che, uh, um, far more effectively than, than I could ever achieve. The show over the four years was a part of a chorus, if you will, um, every week for the news programs, it was every day for the Jake Tappers of the world and the and the other broadcasters on TV who confronted Trump about his uh, um, uh, um, lack of consistency, to put it mildly. Uh, the um, for people in the media, they did this on a daily basis, and we did this most weekends. Or whatever Trump would say, we were there to say bullshit, 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 bullshit. Whatever he said, bullshit. Trump talks bullshit, bullshit. That's, that's all we did. And the audience was huge. In the beginning, the audience was in the tens of millions of people online. I mean, they had like 22 million, 24 million hits on YouTube and so forth. The success of the way the show is marketed, this has nothing to do with me or anything I did, uh, uh, the success of the way the show is marketed now, they have a very, very big audience. And then when the show is aired on Saturday, uh, including the live feed that goes out at 8.30 on the West Coast, the numbers for the show have been very, very good, comparatively speaking. Also, I've said a hundred times during this experience that uh, um, no one's more aware of the limitations of my Trump uh, uh, impersonation than I am. Uh, when I saw Brendan Gleeson do that thing, I thought, well, good for him. You could find a more real character. What we're doing, you know, you know, the writing is such where it's very brassy and very loud. And anything you might do to achieve, uh, and I've said this a thousand times, something more real is almost impossible in the cold opening of that show. But that's in the past. I, I just want to say that, that, uh, 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 you know, when I held up a sign that said, you're welcome, I thought most people got that that was a joke. I mean, I would never dream in a million years of taking credit for what happened in this country on uh, election day. And then the results were announced on Saturday. And, um, uh, you know, the American people take credit for that. Biden and Harris and their campaign, a very well-managed campaign. Very smart the way that they did that. Very smart the way they handled Trump, who's always... Uh, it's just uh, the, the whole Trump uh, uh, um, uh, energy field is like nitroglycerin. You know, it's just very, very uh, uh, dangerous if you're not careful. Uh, but um, for all of those people who uh, 
hated what I did on Saturday Night Live and were, I mean, I got a lot of people saying complimentary things on my comments on my social media and a lot of positive things. And then there are people who, and I'm talking about people who obviously are not Trump supporters, then people would attack me for, who were Trump supporters. Then there were people who are your uh, online media critics, uh, such as they are, um, who would attack me because they say, you know, you suck and blah, blah, blah. And, and I, I'm like, okay, the, well, the good news is that that's over. And uh, um, the good news for everybody. Um, but uh, <clears throat> I thought um, it, it, it really shows you how much people are just lunging to attack, to criticize, to belittle. Uh, <clears throat> and at times, <clears throat> excuse me, and at times get into the whole cancel thing um, uh, in the online media critics circle. They could form an association, the online media critics circle. But um, uh, by no means would I ever suggest. I thought anybody knew that. Um, it's funny how the world we live in now, you do what you do, then you have to spend a lot of time explaining it to people. And what I find interesting is if you look up some of these writers, like someone will write something that I think is really very unfair, and you look up who they are, and they've got like 1,200 followers on, on Instagram or on Twitter. You know, Twitter is... I mean, Twitter is a great news aggregator. I mean, I go on Twitter to to go to aggregation of The New Yorker and uh, Politico and uh, The Guardian and uh, uh, Intercept. <coughs> Pardon me. If I want a really rich meal, a very thoughtful meal from Intercept. I'm a host of... Uh, people I follow that I think are funny and amusing. I love Pat Oswalt and I love Jim Gaffigan. I, a lot of people, Sarah Silverman, to name a couple of the thousands, a couple of thousand that I follow. But mostly it's news aggregation or people who themselves function as aggregators like uh, Kurt Anderson, my friend Kurt. Um, and uh, uh, Twitter is, for me, news aggregation and the rest of it is just a complete pile of shit. Everybody just going on and on, myself included. I mean, I really have pulled back from Twitter um, a lot because just Twitter is just this um, loony bin, you know, right and left. Um, but uh, in, in the forward thinking part of uh, this message, I'm just grateful that everything turned out the way it did. I was in Washington Square, masked and distanced from a friend of mine taking a little walk. We had some things to discuss. I hadn't seen him in a while. We were walking, and as we were leaving the park, we were leaving that northeastern corner going up University Place, and the whole park just erupted and started shouting and screaming. And I went up to my apartment, and I sat, and I listened to the cheering. I said, and I cried. I cried. I was really, really very... Um, I was very, very... Uh, um, pleased that everything was called the way that it was, and hopefully... Whoever it is that has Trump's ear, which the tragedy is, apparently, there's almost nobody that has his ear, um, he will uh, concede. Um, and now, as I've mentioned in other <clears throat> social media, we have a chance. When Trump was in office, we had no chance to cure the, the uh, COVID, to tackle the COVID. Um, it's ironic that the highest numbers posted were over the weekend if I read the news correctly, that the highest numbers posted were over the weekend of the COVID. Um, just mind-blowing. I'm going to work right now. Everybody's masked, shielded, gloved, wiped down all day long. And so, you know, but still, and we haven't had one case on this set, but I have other friends who work on other shows. If the principal cast got sick, they might shut down, but people in the crew get, sh get sick, they bring somebody else in. And there, I think there's one show I know where they had two people get sick. And um, they were not on the set. They were like in offices somewhere in production and or writers or something that were not around the principal cast. So um, a show that I'm not on, a friend told me about that. So, uh, um, but now with Biden and Harris there, we have, uh, we have a chance to beat this thing, which is just ruining everybody's lives. 
my children, our children, Ilari and I, they're very lucky to have each other and they've formed these bonds that are the byproduct of this crazy life we're living. But um, um, I have a lot of gratitude. I have a lot of gratitude today for that. I'm so grateful. But, uh, I'm so grateful that this was possible. Um, because with Trump in office, we had no chance. It was just a constant downward spiral, you know. Um, and now we, to, to a degree, we don't have to really worry about that anymore. Um, hopefully his concession will be forthcoming. But his concession is almost irrelevant. That'd be the first person who, who withholds a concession and, you know, you see that it doesn't really matter because he's gone. You know, they're going to certify this election and he'll be gone. Um, I think even people in the Republican Party realize that it's uh, that uh, it's time for them to rebuild their party, and the only way that's going to happen is to just bury him like toxic waste somewhere, because he is toxic waste. So once again, um, saying you're welcome on Saturday Night Live was another joke, and uh, of course the Online Critics Association. Um, I'm certainly not there. Uh, I'm, I'm like Andy Griffith to them. I'm like some ancient show business figure. I'm like almost George Burns to them, maybe. Um, and then I'll get in trouble for saying that, because they're going to say, oh, you're nowhere near as funny as George Burns, or you're nowhere near as talented as Andy Griffith. And I'm like, I'll tell you up front now, I get it. I get it. But holding up that sign was a joke, because, of course, I would never take credit for anything like that. Um, but I do believe that the show itself, in the sum total, Kate McKinnon, who I love to the day I die, God, who's more talented than Kate? Nobody. Nobody. Whether it's Hillary or Giuliani or uh, uh, Kellyanne Conway, all of the roles she played, Beck as Putin <clears throat> and Pence, we had fun. And I do believe we were a part of that metronomic... Uh, 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 response of bullshit to everything he said but uh, uh, I for one am, am not implying that I'm taking any credit for anything um, like someone wrote online they said it was prop comedy and I'm like okay let's say that, that it was prop comedy we have to be very very careful uh, how much responsibility we pour onto Biden and Harris early on everybody's in a lot of pain they want to get back to work. They want to get their kids back to school. Uh, a vaccine, a competent vaccine, a safe vaccine, uh, uh, therapeutics, whether it's these sprays they're talking about, whatever. That will be hopefully the first thing that uh, is uh, uh, job one for these people. And then after that, to rebuild the economy, to rebuild the country, to rebuild everything that's uh, just been smashed to pieces the last four years. Um, that's going to take time. It's going to take time. And I don't think we should lay too much of a burden on them now and too much of an expectation on them now. Of course, Republicans are going to say that, uh, you know, all these problems, that uh, other problems that will start to emerge in the coming year or two, they're going to say, oh, look what Biden you know, did. Look, look what's happening on Biden's watch. And, and never acknowledge that, uh, you know, Trump treated the COVID like it was... Uh, um, like it was herpes, you know, and he wanted you to just keep on dating. And uh, um, that he wanted you to just ignore whatever the risk was to other people. Not only about yourself, the risk that you presented to other people. But we have to be patient and we have to uh, dial down our expectations of Biden and Harris for the time being till they can get the COVID taken care of. I think that that's the first responsibility, obviously. And then we can start to um, maybe see the country bounce back to some degree. I hope so. I hope so. This country is such a mess. It's such a disaster. Four years of Trump. It's unbelievable. Everybody be safe. Be well.